Here's a question that comes up sometimes. If my marriage is on the brink of divorce, what can I do to save it? Hi, we're Paul and Vicki Jenkins. We're both professionals who work with people day in and day out. We've also been married for over 30 years. We've got three steps for you that work and it goes back to what we learned in elementary school about what to do when you're on fire. Stop, drop, and roll. You know, this happened to me right before I started elementary school, so I hadn't learned about it. I, my coat jackets caught on fire. And you I started jumping, I was, I was jumping around and my dad was trying to get me to stop and hold still and roll around on the ground. And so that is where I first learned about stop, drop, and roll. I had forgotten that, Vicki. Did you remember you, that story? You were actually on fire. You were like looking at homes or something and yeah. somebody's cigarette yeah, some man ignited was, your coat. Yeah, and it started on fire. Well, when I came up with the stop, drop, and roll, mm -hmm. I remember in elementary school they used to teach us that, and in Boy Scouts too, mm -hmm. because sometimes you catch fire when you're in Scouts. Well, because, we, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but the thing is, is when you're in a situation where you're like on fire, your first... Uh, instinct is just go ah and start running around and you just Freak kind of lose it flip. right yeah. and that's why our first step is stop stop mm -hmm. then so if your marriage is on fire remember we're talking about being on the brink right. of divorce what can you do to save this thing stop stop and breathe you need to regain your mind mm -hmm. because the panic that you feel sometimes in a desperate situation, whether you're on fire or your relationship is, is not going to help what you need to do. So stop, breathe, and I mean literally, take some deep breaths in through the nose, hold briefly, out through the mouth, nice and slow. This changes your brain, it changes the flow of blood in your brain and gives you access to the parts of your brain that you need to use to solve this problem. One of the things this stopping and breathing does is it takes some of the urgency out of the situation. You'll feel like, I have to fix this right now, but the problem, I promise, didn't start right now. And so right. just take some of the urgency out of it. That doesn't mean that it's not important. It is important, right. Right. but it's not necessarily urgent. And so if you take a minute to stop and breathe, it's going to put yourself into a better place to think about how to act next. I love what you said about taking the urgency mm -hmm. out. It's important, but it's not urgent. And during the time when you're stopping and breathing, we're also going to do some self-care. Mm -hmm. You need your very best self to show up if we're going to make a difference in this relationship. So do some self-care. And I'm talking about getting enough sleep, eating a balanced diet, getting regular exercise, having periods of prayer and meditation for yourself so that you can take care of the person that you're bringing to this relationship. And sometimes it's really important to find a trusted source to talk with that can help you see your own thoughts and how they are making you show up. So you're talking about like a, like coach, a coach or an or advisor, some, yes. counselor, you maybe know, a I've, therapist. I've used coaching and it just really helps you take a step back and see how you're experiencing things and how your choices I think a lot of the times we don't even think we have choices, right? right? And sometimes finding a coach just opens your eyes to the fact that there are choices. Helps to clear some of that, mm. that head trash that goes right. on and all of the thinking that might be getting us stuck. I also love this analogy that one of my coaches shared with me that you can't read a label from inside of the bottle. <laughs> and so you need somebody on the outside of the bottle to help you read the label. Right. So the first step is stop. If we go back to our on fire analogy, it's stop, drop, and roll, okay. right? So let's go to drop next. What you're going to drop primarily is your need to be right. Man, this is a hard one. But once you can drop the need to be right, it opens up the opportunity to focus on the relationship. Right. You're also dropping mm -hmm. your need for that other person to change. Right. After three decades of clinical experience, I can't tell you how often a couple comes in and, and they both want me to change their spouse. <laughs> right. Right? 
Your need to have that other person change is getting in the way. And it, it's creating a dynamic that's not helpful. So we have to drop our need to be right. I was just thinking about my friend Brett Williams. He wrote a book. The title, <laughs> You Can Be Right or You Can Be Married. And it's Love funny, the but there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> there really is. So you drop your need to be right. You drop your need for anyone else, including your spouse, to change anything. Now, you're going to have some resistance at this point, most likely, because you know that they need to change something. Well, and you know, and you're right, that things would be easier if they changed. Things would be better if they shaped up. It would be a lot easier up. and better. But... That's not who you're in control of, right? So we're going to drop the need to be right and be willing to examine what can I do. Well, here's the other rationale for that. And it, it goes back to some research that was done by the Gottman Institute. Doctors John and Julie Gottman and, and others have replicated this where they found the number one problem that comes up in a relationship starts with criticism. Okay, they called it the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Criticism, defensiveness, contempt, and stonewalling. And the criticism comes when someone else wants you to change something. Think about it. If I come to you and say, look, you really need to change something, you're going to feel criticized, even if I don't intend it that way. So we're going to throw you a bone here because guess what? You're right. You are right. Things would be better if your spouse shaped up. But that's not helpful. Because as soon as you think that, they feel criticized. And then boom, we're off to the races with the conflict. Before we get to the role part of our strategy, I'm going to be sharing with you nine principles. You don't have to scramble to write these down. I've got them on a PDF for you. Just go to the URL on the screen, drpauljenkins.com forward slash nine principles, you're going to want to have this in your hand. So go grab it. So our final strategy is to roll. Roll out a new strategy if you think your marriage is on the brink of divorce. You know, I'm remembering, I went to the conference where the Gottmans presented mm -hmm. that research I referred to earlier. And I came home from that conference all pumped up and excited because of everything that I had learned and I was sharing it with you. <laughs> And you said something so brilliant that has stuck with me all of these years. You said, oh, so do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Is that what you learned in a couple of days, Paul? And I'm like, yeah, you just summed it well, up. Well, and I remember hearing it in some sort of a conference or something where when you were dating, you kind of knew what worked. And then you got married yeah, and you right? stopped doing it. You did things that didn't work anymore. So we need to roll out new strategies of things we know that work and just be willing to stick with those for a while. The research is really clear about this. We know what doesn't work. I already shared that with you. Criticism is going to kill a relationship. So instead of doing that, what do we do? The nine principles, hopefully you grab that PDF. Let's put the URL back up on the screen, drpauljenkins.com forward slash nine principles. These nine principles are guaranteed. Now, when I say guaranteed, usually people's skepticism meters go off. Just <laughs> stick with me for a minute. I have been a shrink for three decades. I have seen crazy stuff. You can't shock me. And in that 30 years or more of clinical practice, I have never seen anything that couldn't be resolved in a marriage with the proper application of these nine principles. That's how powerful they are. And I've seen some pretty goofy stuff. Mm -hmm. So these nine principles work. Let me just give you a little preview of what we're looking at here. The first one is positivity. When I say positivity, I'm coming from my background as a professional psychologist. I don't mean the trite, fluffy, just think positive that you hear from those motivational speakers out there. I mean, learn how to operate the equipment of your own mind. That's what positivity is for me. And it's the starting place of everything else because it, it literally affects how you think. How you think affects how you feel. How you feel affects how you show up in this relationship. It has to be the starting point. And that's only the first of these nine principles. Remember, these nine principles are in context of rolling them out. It's really important to remember mm -hmm. that you are the one rolling them out. You're not steamrolling them over your spouse and saying, Ooh. you have to do this. These are what I can do if my marriage is on the brink of divorce. The good news about mm -hmm. this is you can make a positive 
impact on this mm -hmm. relationship, even if you're the only one working right. on it. And that's good news, right? There's nine of these principles. We're not going to go into all nine here in this video, but grab that PDF. Once again, drpauljenkins.com forward slash nine principles. We've got them all on the list there for you. Now here's how you use it. And Vicki, you just led into this right. because it's not something to beat up your spouse with. It's not something to go in and say, oh, you need to do this one and this one and this one better. Because even though you're right, that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. These are for personal use only. Can I reemphasize that for you? These are for personal use only. So you look at the list and you ask yourself, okay, which of these nine principles can I apply? Which of them can I work on? I guarantee you're gonna find at least three or four. But what if you can't save this marriage? I got a bonus for you. Remember I promised this at the beginning. Here's the thing with those nine principles. Those principles guarantee the best outcomes for you regardless of the status of your marriage. Here's what I mean. Let's say that this marriage does go to a divorce and sometimes they do, okay? Because it's a team sport. You can't unilaterally save this marriage. You can make a big impact like we've talked about, but what if you can't save it? You're still in the best position to apply those nine principles if your marriage doesn't last. Most people, when they get into a situation where a divorce occurs, they abandon some of the nine principles. Definitely. Like positivity, we already mentioned that one. But what about forgiveness and respect and compassion and love? Those are all on the list. They throw those out the window and instead they go to blame and bitterness and anger. Do you know any bitter, angry, divorced people? <laughs> right. It's kind of a silly question, but we well, all know. And we're talking about divorce, but what if you have children involved in this? Yeah. And I, you know, I work with kids day in and day out. And the kids that really struggle the most are the parents who have abandoned those nine principles. Yeah, those principles, moral principles, and are so mean to each other that their children are suffering. That's the bonus. Yeah. The nine principles are going to help you either way. Mm -hmm. So grab those, get busy, focusing on what can I apply from that list of nine principles and you're guaranteed to have better outcomes. Remember, you don't have to do this on your own. We've got those nine principles all ready to send to you. drpauljenkins.com forward slash nine principles. We'll get that PDF in your hands. Good luck with this.